Hello, this is John Mount from WinVector LLC, a San Francisco Bay Area based company specializing in data science consulting and training. Today I'd like to talk about using R and RStudio to process data and in particular debug a data processing step called Magreeter Pipelines. For our Magreeter Pipeline, We'll take the Magreeter example that was released as part of the announcement of the Pure package. To work with this, we start up our Studio and we have the example in our editor. We can then copy that into our console to run the example. And as with the original example, we've built a linear model modeling miles per gallon as a function of car weight partitioned on the declared number of cylinders in the car's engine. This is actually a fairly detailed series of analyses, and it's the merit of the dplyr pipeline that it can be expressed so succinctly. However, suppose we made a mistake, like we got the variable wrong, weight z. Then when we run the pipeline, instead of getting our desired results, we get an error. Now in this case, we can search our code for the weight z as seen in the error message and find our mistake. However, in a longer pipeline where we're altering data frames, perhaps through the dplyr verb mutate, we may have variable names that are correct in some lines and incorrect in others, so the mere name of the variable may not be enough to find the problem. So what we want to do is debug the pipeline. Magreeter itself supplies a debug pipe command, however, I haven't found that to be my favorite technique in the past. We're going to show a rather MacGyver-esque debugging method suggested by one of the readers of our blog. On the WinVector blog, where we often write about data science, statistics, and mathematics, we mentioned that MacReader, the common pipe operator found in R, has a doppelganger, or another operator that behaves somewhat like a pipe. We call this operator Bizarro MacReader, and it turns out it's very good for debugging as it can be single stepped through and has eager semantics. Let's try that on our example. To use the Bizarro pipe to debug, all we need to do is replace all instances of the proper Magreeter pipe with the Bizarro pipe. We're going to do that with a global find and replace. The Bizarro pipe is a sign into dot, followed by a semicolon. For this to work properly, we have to make all of the dplyr pipe steps a bit more explicit. Essentially, we need to show where the dot option is, or what is the primary argument to every step. However, I feel this actually improves readability and is not a big minus. I will make the changes now. This augmented pipeline with the explicit dot arguments and the bizarro pipe can be single stepped through, allowing us to find our problem. I'll use RStudio's command enter to single step through the pipeline. One thing I should point out is we need to set an option to view the intermediate results which are stored in dot. I'll get to that option through the RStudio preferences. The preference we want is show.last.value in the environment listing. Dot values are traditionally invisible, so the dot is not shown. However, we can capture the last value of any calculation in the dot last value and display it once we've set that option in RStudio. We now see, after running the first line four, that the dot last value is a data frame of 32 observations across 11 variables. And we can expand it and take a look at the contents. We can now resume executing the pipeline line by line thanks to the Bizarro pipe. 
And there's our error. We have the previous value available in last value for inspection. We can look at these data frames and we can see that none of them have a variable called WTZ, which is mentioned in the error message. So we also know that we failed on line six as we were single stepping and our value before line six is available because the error aborted the calculation before the assignment in the bizarre pipe or bizarro pipe happened. This is strong evidence that this WTZ is a typo and should have been the variable WT. We can make the correction and continue to execute from where we are. And now we've completed the pipeline. To return it to a normal dplyr pipeline, we replace the bizarro pipe operator. with the traditional dplyr and magreter pipe operator. And we can now run the corrected code. For more on the bizarro pipe operator, I suggest reading about magreter's doppelganger on the WinVector blog. The WinVector blog covers many topics in data science, mathematics, and statistics, and it's something I hope you will enjoy reading. Thank you very much for your time.